truly feel bad for Hillary Clinton because no one likes her. Like, I voted for her, but I don't like her. Like, if she came up to talk to me at a party, I'd be like, I'm sorry, I have to go to the bathroom. And then if she tried to talk to me in the bathroom, I'd be like, I'm sorry, I have to use the men's room. I just made a life choice. crazy that the Trump campaign was in contact with Russia when the Hillary campaign wasn't even in contact with Michigan. <laughs> it's a direct flight. It's so close. ...making sure that South Carolina became the first state with body cameras. There's more work to be done, but you got to lay down these markers. you got to build toward uh, common sense uh, gun reform, criminal justice uh, uh, reform, and all the like. So, I think we've got a very, uh, I think we've got somebody saying here, we have we to bring to them apologize for mass to incarceration. Heal. Okay, we'll talk I'm about it. I'm not a super predator, Hillary Clinton. Okay, fine, we'll talk can about it. Can you apologize to black people for mass incarceration? Well, can I talk? And then maybe yes. you can listen to what I say. Okay, fine. Thank you very much. Uh, there's a lot of issues, a lot of issues in this campaign. The very first speech that I gave, back in April, was about criminal justice reform and about... You're being rude. That is not appropriate. That is not appropriate. That's not appropriate. That's yeah. rude. Yeah. You want to hear the facts and you just want to talk. I know that you okay. called black youth super predators in 1994. Let, let, Please explain the record. Speak. Explain yeah. it to us. You owe a black girl an apology. Well, Excuse us. That's an inappropriate you will. Give me a chance to talk. I'll I'll help your side. You know what? Nobody's ever asked me before. You're the first person to ask me, and I'm happy to address it. But you are the first person to ask me here. Um, okay, back to the issues. Thank you. The issues that. I Let's talk about Honduras. Um, I want to go to Hillary Clinton and the 2009 coup in Honduras that ousted the democratically elected President Manuel Zelaya. In her memoir, Hard Choices, Hillary Clinton wrote about the days following the coup. She wrote, quote, In the subsequent days, I spoke with my counterparts around the hemisphere, including Secretary Patricia Espinosa of Mexico. We strategized on a plan to restore order in Honduras and ensure that free and fair elections would be held quickly and legitimately, which would render the question of Zelaya moot, unquote. Since the coup, Honduras has become one of the most dangerous places in the world. In 2014, um, the Honduran environmental activist Berta Cáceres spoke about Hillary Clinton's role in the 2009 coup. This is the woman who was assassinated last week in La Esperanza, Honduras. But she spoke about Hillary Clinton's role in the 2009 coup with the Argentine TV program Resumen Latinoamericano. We're coming out of a coup that we can't put behind us. We can't reverse it. It just kept going. And after, there was the issue of the elections. The same Hillary Clinton, in her book, Hard Choices, practically said what was going to happen in Honduras. This demonstrates the meddling of North Americans in our country. The return of the president, Mel Zelaya, became a secondary issue. There were going to be elections in Honduras. And he or she, Clinton, recognized that they didn't permit Mel Zelaya's return to the presidency. There were going to be elections. And the international community, officials, the government, the grand majority accepted this, even though we warned this was going to be very dangerous and that it would permit a barbarity, not only in Honduras, but in the rest of the continent. And we've been witnesses to this. That was Honduran environmental activist Berta Cáceres, speaking in 2004, 14. She was murdered last week in her home in La Esperanza, in Honduras. Uh, last year, she won the Goldman Environmental Prize. She's a leading environmentalist in the world. There is this rumor that is being perpetuated that Trump talking about abortion and punishing women and doctors then for it, uh, that somehow Bernie Sanders was saying that that wasn't an important issue. Regardless of the fact that he's always stood up for women's rights, equal pay, equality, and is pro-choice, which the other Democratic candidate very well knows, there is this rumor that is pitching out there that he, because he's saying that we're giving Trump too much time on the airways and we need to stop feeding into that hate and talking about the issues, that somehow that meant that he doesn't care about women's issues. Shame on you, Hillary. No, oh, sorry, hold on. Let me watch my tone.
Welcome to both of you. So, so Yane, you. I, I, I want to start with you. Um, it's virtually impossible for Senator Sanders to win the nomination. So why is it Bernie or bust for you? Um, you know, a lot of people, they perceive the Bernie or bust movement as being something that's almost like a temper tantrum um, for people who support Bernie. And I think it's really important for people to understand that Bernie or bust is really a representation of how, um, how we feel about Hillary Clinton. We don't like Hillary Clinton. Um, and um, we can't support her. So, Yanni, under no circumstances would you vote for Hillary Clinton? I'm definitely not going to vote for her. So, so Emily, you're a Democratic strategist. You're a Clinton supporter. So, so convince Yanni she's wrong. Yeah, well, I'm sorry to hear that. And I do think there are a lot of people that are open to supporting Hillary. Then, really, the the difference between the candidates has always really been in in uh, in degree and not in kind. Look. There's no question that Sanders brought forward a lot of issues that really tapped into what a lot of people are feeling in this country right now and want to be talking about income inequality, affordable college. He talked about free college. He talks about affordable college, money in politics. But the reality is that these are issues that she actually had in her platform, have always been a part of her platform, and she talks about increasingly more. He did put a real spotlight on them. He talks about them in very simplistic terms. And so I think it has forced her and her campaign to talk about them much more broadly and put them more front and center. But look, so, this campaign is going to, this general so, camp so, election no, no, is going to be for about a second, Emily, Because I want to mm -hmm. see if any of that makes sense to Yanni. So when you hear Emily say those things, what do you think, Yanni? Well, there are a few things I think. I think, first of all, that Hillary Clinton says things that aren't always what she means and aren't what she believes in. And she's demonstrated that. And one of the, one of the, one of the clearest ways that she's demonstrated that was in 2008 when she was running against um, then-Senator Obama um, for president. And she claimed that she was going to, uh, that she was against the Colombian Free Trade Agreement and, um, and that she was going to be basically lobbying against that. And that's what she said publicly during her campaigning. But when her emails came out, we saw that what she was actually doing um, behind the scenes out of the public eye was actually lobbying for that exact agreement. So that's evidence for us that what Hillary Clinton says in order to win the election doesn't anything to do with what it is that she's going to actually do if she becomes the president. And so mm -hmm. I, whatever she's talking about on a platform, I just don't trust her. And, um, and well, so while I, and, and I, I do agree hit, that Yane, there are think, a lot of things. I think you've hit the nail on the head. You just don't trust her. And Emily, uh, Mrs. Clinton does have a trust issue. So what can you say to voters like Yane to say, yes, you can now trust Hillary Clinton. Um, she means what she says. Yeah, that is clearly her highest vulnerability. That is something that we do see, um, that we do see pervasive. And this has been a theme of media attacks on her for the last 20 years. Look, we forget the fact that most politicians come into the, ma to the main stage at the same time to America. Maybe their state knows them, maybe their district knows them, but people generally get to know them all at the same time. That is not the case with Clinton. And there have always been these attacks on her for whatever reason. But I think that as we get more into you know, her history, her commitment, that we see that she actually always has been committed to fighting for people that don't have a voice. Well, it's actually it has always been there in her public service. Yane, Yane, go it's ahead. It's her history that, that actually, um, it's not simply, like, it's not just the, the Colombian Free Trade Agreement. It's, the, it's what the State Department did under her leadership going into Haiti and when they wanted to, to raise the minimum wage for the Haitians from 24 cents an hour to 61 cents an hour, they negotiated it down to 31 cents an hour. It's, what, it's the regime change in Honduras and all of the people who are dying as a result of Clinton's in, influence in Honduras after they had their first democratic election. It's the mistake of the Iraq war. It's the mistake of Libya. It's her history history that causes us questions and so now she's saying new things and that she's saying new things that are popular suddenly she realizes that the, the importance of Black Lives Matter because of the Black Lives Matter movement and these things don't seem genuine they seem like what she needs to say in order to get elected we don't trust what she says and we don't like what she's done so for okay. those combined reasons we won't vote for Hillary Clinton okay last word Emily Look, I think that people read into what, th they believe what they want to believe, right? Like you can discount pieces of past if you don't think they fit with a current narrative. I think there is a lot to be said for somebody who can learn from their past mistakes and say, look, we tried it, it didn't work, we're moving forward with something that does work. That is what we want in a leader, that is what we want with the President of the United States. And I don't think that we're seeing that, honestly, across the board in any other of the candidates. 
All right, I have to leave it there. What I want in a leader is a person who has foresight. I want a leader Thank who has you. foresight, who has the ability right. to know in 1994 that there are issues with the crime bill, not to look back after thousands of lives have been destroyed and families have been destroyed and say, ooh, I made a mistake. I want Hillary Clinton is a war criminal, I'm sorry. And what I, makes her a war criminal? Because she has voted for, first of all, let's just look at the Iraq war vote. Killed two million people in Iraq. N new figures just came out that said that two million people have died in Iraq and Afghanistan since 2003, not even to mention the million b b babies who died from sanctions in the 90s. Aside from that, Hillary Clinton, the Gaddafi, Libya, um, Syria, she wants to bomb Iran. I mean, she is the worst. If you she look said at she her, wants to bomb Iran? you look, someone did a report, I think it was in the New York Times, kind of uh, an embedded report in the National Security c Cabinet. And they said that she is on par, if not worse than John McCain, of all of her war hawkish ideals in terms of foreign oh. policy. It is scary shit, man. So as much as people want to pretend like she's like this liberal do-gooder, I'm most concerned about any imperialism, militarism, and you know u.s hegemony so i'm not going to be voting for hillary clinton because she's a fucking woman